What's going on, y'all? What's going on, folks? So, obviously, I have seen Rise of Skywalker. Let me resize that. And... I actually liked it. I... <laughs> It it wasn't it wasn't bad. It, in my opinion, it wasn't bad, and you know, full transparent transparency. I wholeheartedly recognize that maybe what yo man, what the fuck? Thanks for the five get the souls, man. Appreciate that. Dude. I don't have my alerts on this uh on this scene here. Let me get that. Hey, think that I'm some fools. Hey, think that I'm some fools. That's not the right one. That's not the right one. Fucking interrupting my review and my discussion here, sir. But thank you for the thank you for the get the subs though. I still appreciate it, I promise. Just, no, no. Stop. Anyways. Yeah, I actually, I actually liked it. Now, like I was saying, um, I wholeheartedly recognize maybe I am giving the movie more credit simply because I was going in with the lowest expectations possible, simply because um, The Last Jedi was just that, just heaping of a pile of shit like it was. But all I can tell you guys is how the movie made me feel. All I can tell you guys are, you know, is my emotion towards the movie and... By the end of the movie, I actually liked it, and I'm shocked. And I'm shocked. And I told you guys before that even if I'm not interested in something and I try it out, I do go into it with an open mind. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't go in there wanting to hate something or, like, you know, oh, I'm too prideful to admit um, that I like it if I actually end up liking it. You know, that's that's not me. And I told you guys that with Luigi's Mansion, I legitimately hated that game. I went in expecting Rise of Skywalker to be just, like I said, a heaping pile of shit, but it was actually, it wasn't great. Well, it was, it was, I would say good. I thought it was good. Now, with that being said, yes, there were problems with it. Of course, there's problems with it. But the reason why I'm not, I just can't bring myself to be as harsh on on this movie is because of the movie that it followed up and i'm not saying that simply in just a matter of like a comparison context like oh well at least it's not the last jedi so it's good i'm not saying that i'm saying given what they had to work with you know what i mean you got to think about the context given with what ryan passed you know tossed over to jj JJ did it and this is a fucking miracle. This is a fucking miracle what JJ pulled off. Because by all means, this movie had all the reasons to be a terrible movie. This movie had every reason in the world to be a flop. This trilogy had every reason in the world to burn and crash. But somehow, it, it didn't. Somehow, J.J. was able to recover from the stupid bullshit that Ryan had done. And the trilogy has been saved. Now, the hell? Double alerts? <laughs> you know, thanks for that Mixer host uh, war. Um, so, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, oh, the trilogy's great now. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, it's not a disaster now. You know, like, it's it's not all bad. Like, there was actually... It, it, it was it was saved from being a train wreck, basically. You know what I mean? Again, to repeat, I'm not saying that, oh, the, the trilogy was actually damn good. Like, oh, damn. Like, no, but it's... it's It was serviceable now. I really feel like J.J. pulled up the average um, that The Last Jedi really sunk... You know, for this new trilogy, I thought seven was, I thought seven was a solid movie. I think it did what it was supposed to do, 
right? Because it was just supposed to be kind of a reintroduction of Star Wars, introducing the characters, setting up their motivations, their backstories, and it set up all the really important plot points and things that were supposed to be explored by the two movies that followed. And then that's the reason why The Last Jedi was so bad is because it kind of took all those plot points and killed them, like killed it, <laughs> killed them or ended them. I, I was thinking ended and killed at the same time, so I said killed it. Um, it killed them or ended them, you know, in uh, just abrupt and unsatisfying ways. Now, um, so I've seen some people criticize Rise of Skywalker for having retconning. But, like, you know, what, what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're... The Last Jedi was so bad. Ryan Johnson did such a incompetent job with, with Episode 8. There had to be retconning for Episode 9 to be even remotely close to anything of a decent film. You know what I mean? There is no way. No fucking way they couldn't have done any retcons pertaining to Episode 8. And still had Episode 9 be serviceable you know what i mean what's up what's up shinobi how you doing man um now with that being said there are some retconnings that aren't related to episode eight but i still think that a lot of that was still just kind of due to the episode eight effect right like episode nine couldn't shake everything you know that episode um eight tried to like allude to you know what i mean like um, like, J.J. had to go along with some of the ideas. But I feel like he did his best to try to cover up some of the bullshit Ryan did. But enough about the directors and just kind of, like, general vague things. Um, I'm going to get into, like, what I like about the movie first and what I didn't like about the movie. And there's a lot on both sides. So what I liked about the movie is that um, the script, as far as character-to-character -character dialogue goes, was so much better in this in this movie so much better um interactions didn't feel so like manufactured and very like forced right like it felt a lot more grounded and real um you felt the emotions right like this movie did a good job of conveying to the audience that these this core cast of characters you know poe and ray like you really felt their relationship their bond with each other you know what i mean it did a really good job of expressing and conveying that. Um, they didn't try to go out of their way to these forced jokes. Uh, the movie has some like genuinely funny moments and they weren't, it, it wasn't this like forced type of like Marvel shit that they try to pull with the last Jedi, like opening the movie with the fucking yo mama joke. You know what I mean? Like the funny moments in this movie were actually organic. They made sense, right? They didn't feel like they were just, you know, out from left field and just kind of forced. It's like, okay, y'all were trying way too hard to make it funny, right? Like, they, they felt more natural. You know what I mean? So, so basically, you're saying it was a movie that was directed. Yeah, a, 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 exactly. Like, so so basically, what I, the overall point I'm trying to make is that this movie felt like, um, as far as the script and, like, the dialogue, it has some tact to it. You know what I mean? Like, it has some actual tact. It had some, uh, what's, what's, what's another word I'm looking for? It had, like, there was actually, like, content there. You know what I mean? Like, it really felt like J.J. really cared. You know what I mean? He was really trying to make a good Star Wars movie. He wasn't just trying to make his own movie and his own little, you know, self-righteous take and oh, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to use Star Wars as my base for just doing what I want to fucking do, right? It actually felt, it actually felt like J.J. cared. You know what I mean? So, so like I said, um, I think they did a good job of, you know, uh, with the dialogue, the character interactions. Um, there's a lot of emotional moments. They even made, they even had an emotional moment with C-3PO, which they kind of, like, fix, like, basically soup like right after or whatever so it wasn't like as much of a big deal as it could have been but there was even a moment where they made us care about c-3po and i never thought that would fucking happen that i would care about something c-3po does you know what i mean 
Um, and I'm trying to, I'm being vague right now because this is, I guess this is going to be my spoiler free uh, section. And then I'm going to go ahead and start getting into like specific things. Um, so yeah, I like that. Uh, another thing, this movie was fucking gorgeous. Like, and, and that's one thing I can at least get to The Last Jedi was that The Last Jedi was a good looking movie too. Uh, this movie was probably even better looking. Like, this is a clean-ass looking movie. Now, with The Last Jedi, that didn't matter because everything else was fucking ass. But I feel like this movie had enough behind it to where I could say that, um, the movie looked great and then that's that. I don't have to, like, say that, oh, but it doesn't make up for everything else because everything else was at least okay enough. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, the movie was gorgeous. Um, Great colors, awesome cinematography, like, it was a damn good, and it wasn't like, oh, like, this scene looked good, and this scene looked good, it was like, the whole movie looked good, you know what I mean, it wasn't like specific scenes and set pieces, it, it was basically like the whole fucking time, even a scene where they're just like, in a corridor of a ship, I don't know, everything just looked really damn good, you know, um, lots of modern movies look shit these days, my guy, have you seen D DC movies, hello? <laughs> like some of the older ones come on man um so moving on for that another thing i liked and not i'm not going to give full credit to this but um one thing i really enjoyed in this movie was it made me care about ray a little bit it's sad it took to the third movie for me to care about the fucking protagonist but um ray actually struggles she struggles in this movie now it's, this is weird to say, and it may come off as a contradiction if you haven't watched the movie yet, but for those who have watched it, you know, what's up, Falcon? You know exactly what I mean. But um, she struggles, but she's still OP at the same time. You know, she pulls a bunch of just like, I can do this. You know, like, I, I'm Ray. You know, like, a, a situation has a problem, but I'm Ray, so I have the magic solution to this problem. So I know that may sound like a contradiction, but I promise it's not. Once you watch the movie, you'll understand what I mean. But despite the fact that Rey is OP as fuck in this movie, um, she actually has some... No, she did She did struggle. She did struggle. She There's two instances in this movie where she actually loses. You know what I mean? There's two moments in this movie where Rey is not successful. You know what I mean? And it's sad that that's a big deal, but that's just how poorly, you know, uh, written and conveyed this character was, you know, in the first two. You know what I mean? But yeah, like, there is a fight in this movie that Ray loses. And that's a big deal. There's a, there's a scene where she loses, and then there's a scene where she does something that she regrets. And she's like, oh my god, no, like, you know, I, 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 it, was like, it was like an utter failure moment. You know what I mean? And that felt great. Because up until that moment, Ray never really failed. She never had any struggles. And kind of, the, and, and like, you know, physical things aside, or whatever, right? Like, as far as like combat and stuff like that. Um, she had this overarching thing that she was struggling with in terms of, um kind of like her her pull to the dark side and she was like slowly kind of like losing herself type deal so she had struggles in this movie despite her op powers and shit she still had struggles in this movie both physically and internally mentally whatever unfortunately these struggles didn't develop or happen or these failures never happened until the last fucking movie of the trilogy but they were there so this movie actually made me have somewhat of a liking towards ray finally Finally. But like I said, with that being said, she still is OP. And this movie had a lot of just kind of things it was pulling out of its ass. And so I that's a good segue because I believe that's everything I liked about the movie. I love the characters. They didn't have Finn just be this blubbering, you know, idiot, you know, for, for comic relief, just doing silly shenanigans the whole time, right? Like, Finn was a serious character. He was a soldier, you know, in the resistance. He was doing things that were meaningful, unlike in The Last Jedi, where his whole arc with Rose was completely useless. And they, yeah, they they put, speaking of Rose, they backseated her, which was a great idea, because that character was not necessary, not good at all. So that was a very good decision from J.J. 
to just completely put Rose on the back seat. She maybe had like seven lines. Ten lines or less in the entire movie, which is a good thing. This is spoiler free for now. But I'm gonna get into I'm gonna get into like specifics later on. I'll let you guys know when I'm gonna get into specifics. So yeah, like I said, they they didn't have Finn just be this like, oh blah, 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 you know, this fucking comic relief, just doing silly shit, you know, shenanigans, like, no. You know, he was a real actual fucking character. You know what I mean? Uh Poe was Poe was the one character I feel like has been actually good for all three movies. I think Poe was always a good move, uh, a good character. Um, Ray, you know, I never thought was good. Uh, I, th I thought Finn was fine in the first one, and then I think they just completely just, you know, comic relief irrelevantized him in Last Jedi. But they redeemed him in this movie. So, yeah, I believe that's everything I liked about it. Um, I love I loved the character. The, the, the dialogue was good. Dialogue between characters was good. It did a good job of showing the interpersonal interpersonal uh, connections you know with the uh with the characters and it did the characters justice it did leia justice it did it did chewbacca you know how chewbacca was just kind of just reserved to this fucking porg babysitter or whatever like in the in last jedi right like they actually did chewbacca justice he was useful um they had emotional moments with like chewbacca even you know what i mean so like all the characters were handled with respect. Even Lando, who you would not, who would you would initially assume is just there to just kind of uh, have people just be like, "Oh, nostalgia! Lando's back! I got this movie." Which maybe it is, maybe it still is, or whatever. But they didn't treat him as like just a tool to get old fans, you know, watching the movie. They actually treated him with again tact, respect. They didn't just use him as like a little thing to like dangle in front of our eyes. You know what I mean? They didn't, you know. Like, <laughs> he was a normal character. He didn't overstay his welcome. He had an appropriate amount of screen time. You know what I mean? I think they did him well. Okay, so, I, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's everything I liked about the movie. Um, and it actually had a lightsaber duel. Which wouldn't be a thing you would even bring up until The Last Jedi happened where there wasn't a single lightsaber duel in that movie but i mean there was a throne room scene that i guess was supposed to be the replacement for that but it's still not lightsabers so what did i not like about the movie okay so there's there's quite a, there's a there's quite a few things here um like i said ray is just incomplete god mode she just what's up loose uh, i'm not into the spoiler sections yet but yeah if you just want to go in completely fresh yeah you might want to dip but i appreciate you tuning in so Ray's completely god mode. Now, like I said, she still struggles in this movie despite that, um, which I'm appreciative of. But the reason why I'm still bringing this up and it still kind of irked me is because she is, again, using powers very proficiently that she has not trained for. She has not been trained. She is using, like, legendary force powers. Sith or Jedi, mind you. I guess that was a little bit of a spoiler. Um, but, <laughs> you know, Sith or Jedi, she's using them without... I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Is she's using them without any lick of training. Powers that in previous movies and in the extended universe, whatever, which apparently is no longer canon, but whatever, um, that, that, you know, Sith Lords and Jedi Masters have been like, oh, it takes years and years to practice and train with. Like, she's just doing them. She's just fucking doing it. And then she also conveys some powers that she ever she never actually uses in combat. So there's in the beginning of the in the beginning of the movie, she's kind of like meditating, trying to connect to like, you know, Jedi's and stuff, you know, dead Jedi's. And she's like levitating in the air, you know, like frog style um, you know, right? And um, and like levitating rocks and shit. So like she could full on levitate herself. But she doesn't use that in combat. And there's like a couple other things she doesn't use in combat she totally could. But like I said, I don't want to get into that. I don't want to, I don't want to get to like super specifically spoilery yet. Um, but yeah, like Ray's powers are just out of control. She can do these things just cuz and no training. There technically is an explanation for them, but I'll I'll get to that. I'll get to those things for some of them. I'll get to those things later on. Um when I get into the specific spoiler portion of the discussion here. Um Another thing, we all know Palpatine is back, because oh, that's not a spoiler, that's in the trailers, whatever. 
So Palpatine is back, and of course he's a threat to the galaxy again. And apparently he has still all these subordinates, like thousands of people, and his own fleet and stuff. That's really dumb. I mean, the whole idea of Palpatine being back is really fucking stupid, let's be honest. Because what it does is that it completely trivializes Luke's journey entirely. Entirely. Don't get me wrong, I'm a huge Palpatine fan. And I'm going to be honest, Palpatine was pretty fucking lit in this movie. I'm going to be honest. But, <laughs> like, I, I always enjoy seeing Palpatine because, like, I love Episode 3. Episode 3 is my favorite one because, because of Palpatine. So, like, I love seeing Palpatine. I just love the way he talks. I love I love when he yells, you know, unlimited power, you know, all that shit. Like, he's just a fucking goon. You know what I mean? I fucking love Palpatine. But that doesn't change the fact that it still makes no sense that, that he's alive in the first place. But, in JJ's defense, I feel like that was JJ just saying, like, oh, my God, episode eight was such an astronomical failure. I have to, like, I have to pull something out my ass to make anything anything close to a compelling finale. You know what I mean? I'm not excusing that logic completely. I'm just saying that I think that's where JJ came from. So that's why he decided to bring Palpatine back. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, that would depend on whether or not he was planned before episode 7. But I, I kind of reviewed that in my mind. I can't remember anything from episode 7 or 8. That could have even remotely alluded to Palpatine. So I think that I think it was definitely made up. I think they were definitely made up. Um, but yeah, like the he gets thrown down the shaft, and sure, maybe the fucking Sith Lord, Lord of all Sith, can survive being thrown down the shaft. Sure, Star Wars characters have survived a lot of shit. Even Darth Maul survived getting chopped in half and fallen down the shaft. But also for Palpatine, the fucking Death Star exploded. So it's like. How the fuck that man get out? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, toss down the shaft and then, boom. Like, how the fuck is this man alive? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what's up, Hurricane? They should they should have worked with Plagueis. Yeah, they, they should have. They, that would have made a lot more sense. Um, So, yeah, I, I didn't, like, that, that, that. So, like I said, that kind of trivializes Luke's whole journey. and kind of made everything they, they did for not. Because they defeated the Empire and they defeated the Emperor. But it's like, oh, nope. Turns out the Emperor's here and so is the Empire still. So Luke's journey and all that, uh, you know, it just kind of didn't matter. But like I said, with that being said, despite the fact that Palpatine being back makes no sense, I still liked what they did with him. I like, I, I'm a Palpatine fan, man. I th I, Palpatine, like I said, he's a fucking goon. He's crazy. I fucking love him, man. He's like just this power tripping maniac. I fucking love it. But anyways, go uh, on to other things that I don't like. I didn't, I didn't like about this movie. If you guys are just now tuning in, I already went over the things that I did like. Um, so you missed that. But I will be uploading this to YouTube. Um, and, oh yeah, and going back to Palpatine. Um, they never also really explain, and not that I expect a movie to, but it's just kind of dumb how they've been on this remote planet this whole time, and he just has like thousands of ships with probably like hundreds of thousands because there it takes like what like a thousand people to operate a death star if i remember correctly or something like that not a death star excuse me a uh, a star destroyer right a ship so like he has like hundreds of thousands probably like a million fucking people with him on this remote planet and they got this whole they have the biggest fleet ever seen in the galaxy and shit and it's like how did they develop all of this underneath everyone's noses you know what i mean like he had way too much power, way too many people, way too many resources for no one to have ever actually caught on to the fact that this motherfucker was still alive. You know what I mean? But moving on from Palpatine, because I talked about him a lot. Um, I already talked about the uh, Ray's just complete OPness and how she didn't have to train for any of it. Oh, another thing is, is um, he kind of doubles... Well, one thing I didn't like that JJ did is that, like I said, there's a couple of concepts... That Ryan did in episode 8 that unfortunately uh, JJ decided to like retain and double down on. Which he shouldn't have. But I guess that was just him trying to be a little bit respect respectful to Ryan. You know what I mean? Um, so for instance, um, this movie introduces new force powers. 
right? And which you could technically say that eight alluded to him, but J- JJ didn't necessarily have to piggyback off of it and take it to the extent that he did. You know what I mean? Um, so you guys know how in episode eight, when Ray and Kylo were having like the force discord chat, right? Or Skype call, right? Um, how there was to be like raindrops coming to the other person if the other person was in rain. Like JJ doubles down on that. And so in this movie, there's instances where uh, like Kylo is, he takes something that was on Ray. Like, Ray had a necklace, and he takes that necklace, that physical necklace, off of Ray through the Force. I didn't like that. It was, it's, it's cool. But the problem with that is the same problem that the Force Speed, not Force Speed, excuse me, uh, the Light Speed Kamikaze in Episode 8. It, it creates that same problem where it's like, okay, well, if that exists, how come this hasn't been done since the dawn of time? And fuck it, we'll just go ahead and get into the spoiler section. We'll go ahead and get into the spoiler section, alright? You guys are warned. If you don't want to be spoiled, click off now. Um, but not that this is going to be like a super important like plot point or whatever. But I'm just going to go ahead and say this because I'm scared to like slip and accidentally reveal something to you guys. But <laughs> I, 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 like I said, if you guys, if you guys don't want the spoilers, let me just wrap this up for you guys by saying, overall, I did enjoy this movie. I went in expecting this movie to be absolute shit, and I came out actually liking it, despite its flaws. So let me just say that. I'd say watch it. How is the fight choreography? Uh, chore- <laughs> choreography. I'll get to that in a second. But yeah, there's 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 this one scene where they're doing the like the the force Skype, and they're fighting. They're lightsaber fighting through the force. Right. And that might sound really cool, but like I said, like that creates the problem of like, okay, why hasn't this been used since the dawn of time? You know what I mean? Like instead of going into these these ships to infiltrate a ship and try to go in and fight a Sith Lord, why not just force call, Skype call the, the Sith Lord and just duel him from afar? Just like the Sith Lord is sleeping Right, and you just force Skype into his room and just kill the motherfucker, right? Like, like that's what it does. So it, it, it just, and that is, like I said, it's the same. It's the same thing as the whole light speed kamikaze. It's like, okay, well, if one speed, if one ship going into light speed can take out a whole fleet, it's like, how come no one's been doing that this whole time? Why not just make a bunch of unmanned ships to just and just take out all the fleets? You know what I mean? But um, y'all go ahead and talk about the choreography. Um, it was it was okay, it was okay. Um, that's one thing I feel like could have been better. That's one thing I could give episode eight over nine, despite the fact that eight had no lightsaber duel. Eight did have better the choreography, like with the uh, the red room fight. Yes, I know some of the guards are, like intentionally like over swinging and like intentionally missing Ray and Kylo, but that's 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 an every movie thing. You know what I mean? I'm just talking. I'm just, I'm just talking about as far as like the spectacle, right? Because you have some moviegoers who are just more of like the spectacle popcorn moviegoers where they don't really need any, any, a deep, you know, experience or anything like that. They just want to kind of see something cool in action. Um, I I think this movie was maybe a little bit on the weaker side when it comes to just being like a, a a popcorn flick. You know what I mean? But I also think that's why people who like the Last Jedi did not like this movie. Because I feel like this movie sacrifices a little bit of spectacle for the sake of actual, like, I won't won't say good writing, but, like, better writing, right? Like, like I said, like I said earlier, more tact. It cares more about, this movie sacrifices, like, spectacle in terms of, like, choreography, uh, choreography and, like, these big events, like the whole light speed kamikaze like it sacrifices things like that for having a better and more truer star wars movie you know what i mean so now it actually makes sense to me why uh, so many people who like the last jedi did not like this movie because a lot of people i noticed who like the last jedi are people just like ooh, ah sparkly light shining things things happening blasters running through a town you know like and this movie doesn't really do all that that doesn't make it worse, because I, I like I, I, clearly I think this movie is better than Last Jedi, because like I said, it, it sacrifices that 
to be more respectful to as well more respectful not absolutely respectful but just more respectful to, to the source material and try to just focus on making a better fucking movie you know what i mean <clears throat> without getting closer um but yeah moving on from that um there, there is a retcon from episode 8 that is a bad retcon. Most retcons from episode 8 were necessary and good. Um, but there's this one retcon where Rey is having visions of her being on the Sith throne. With We are in the spoilers section, by the way, guys. We are talking spoilers now. There, Rey's having visions of her being on the Sith throne with Kylo. And so, later into, this, into the movie... Ray basically pulls a Luke and she exiles herself to the that planet that Luke was on and she destroys Kylo's ship that she took. And she does that so she can never turn evil. She just gets stranded. So she does guys don't ask me questions like that. I'm like don't don't no I'm not trying to get sidetracked. I'm doing a, re a review slash discussion. Like chill. Um so she she like banishes herself to like Luke's planet or whatever. And and another another continuity thing happens. Um, she sets the ship on fire so she can't get off, and then she throws her lightsaber into the fire to get rid of the lightsaber, and then Luke's force ghost hand comes out and catches the saber. Again, this is another instance of breaking continuity and introducing a concept that had no business being introduced, because now what JJ is telling us is that force ghosts are physical. Or they can make themselves physical. You know what I mean? Like, in episode 8, I thought Yoda summoning lightning was crazy. But, like, okay, maybe maybe you can have some influence over nature as a ghost or whatever. Like, whatever. But in this movie, they they straight up, in, not even insinuate. They show that Force Ghost can straight up just pick up a physical object. <laughs> in the real living world. Not through the, the Force. Trump took my food stamps. Oh my god. Thanks for the follow, man. How you doing? And you just you can't introduce ideas like that. You can't do that. Cause like I said with the whole force Skype call thing. Like that's even worse. Cause surely these Jedi Force ghosts could be like, oh, killed by the Emperor we have. Go to his bedroom and kill him, we will. You know, and just force force ghosts project into his room. And physically strangle him. You know? Kill this bitch we will, you know? Like, like why, why aren't the Jedi Force Ghosts fucking shit up? They can interact with the physical world. Yoda summons lightning in 8. And in episode 9, Luke catches a physical lightsaber. And he raises his X-Wing. Out of the water that he, he had gotten there in the first place for Rey. To uh, to go and, and fight Palpatine. So they have like their regular force powers as well. It's basically... With this new trilogy... It's like being dead doesn't matter. You know what, you know what I mean? Like, it does... Like, what are they losing by dying? You can still communicate. You can still interact. It's like, well, why do you need to actually be alive? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and, and I'm not going to fall, again, I'm not going to put the full blame on episode 9. Because episode 8 is the one that introduced this shit. And I just feel like that was JJ just kind of going like, this has already been introduced, so fuck it, I might as well go along with it type deal. Like, there's no way to really retcon that, something that egregious. You know what I mean? So I don't fully blame him or episode 9 for that. That's more so like, I guess you could say, an aftershock of episode 8. But, goddamn, that I really wish that that concept was never introduced. Um, so going further into that, um, there's also this scene uh, towards the end of the movie where, um, what's up princess, what's up numb nuts, where K Kylo turns good, and I, I kind of I skipped the middle portion though, um, we are talking spoilers right now, by the way. It, it was something else. Um, but anyways, let, 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 me, let me first talk about like the fight scene. So like I said, the choreography wasn't as great. There is a fight scene between Kylo and Rey. And it wasn't... like It was okay. It wasn't like, like ooh, like, that's bad. But it wasn't very good because it wasn't flashy, nor did it look like a very skillful fight. You know what I mean? 
And that's the thing we always like about um, Force user fights um, when it comes to like a lightsaber duel is that they always look flashy. They look professional, right? Like high octane. This was just a very um, kind of Neanderthal. Just, uh, uh, you know, you know, like like type of fight. Like Ray has like no form. Like, Kylo was a little bit, like, Kylo was, like, actually doing, like, some things I could recognize from Kendo, you know, he's kind of, like, you know, trying to, like, redirect her blade and, like, get in type stuff. Ray is straight up taking swings like this, like, you know, she's, like, baseball swinging, you know, like, she, she's clubbing, she's just, like, clubbing at Kylo and, and stuff like that, right? Like, there's no finesse. Yeah, it's like a fucking Chrom ditto. It's just, you know, like, did you know, to mind your spacing, you have stupid frame data. Like, that was Ray. And some of Kylo in this movie. So, like, so that's what I meant about the choreography not being as good. Is that the fighting felt just a little kind of just, like I said, <laughs> primitive, homo sapien, Neanderthal, just, let me kill you with glow stick, you know, type shit. But it wasn't enough to, like, um, not appreciate the moment or the fight or, you know, really take the movie down or anything like that. So, like, it was, it was okay. It was, it, it was okay. Um, yeah, Kylo, Kylo had great moments, honestly. Um, and maybe some people don't agree with this, but as far as the whole trilogy, I think Kylo is, like, probably the best part of the trilogy in terms of how his character is handled compared to everyone else's. Um, I like Kylo as a character. That's probably one of my... Kylo and Poe. Kylo and Poe are like the best characters of this trilogy. Everyone else was like either shoddy or just like ruined from the get-go type shit. Um, but yeah, going going back towards the end of the movie, because so you guys remember when I said that there's the scene where Kylo snatches off a necklace from Rey through the Force? So that shows that matter can actually be transferred through the Force. Like teleportation. Essentially teleportation, right? So... Uh, Ray, well, Kylo actually beats Ray in a fight, which is one of the instances I was talking about of, of Ray actually fucking losing, which never happened until the third fucking movie. But Ray loses, but um, Leia saves her by like uh, calling out to Kylo and it distracts him and then she stabs him or whatever. So Kylo is dying. So while, while he's dying, Ray heals him with her force powers. And let, and let me get into that because I said I would get into that later. So. Yeah, Rey has healing abilities in this movie. Now, that is not new to Star Wars canon. That is not made up. And what I'm thinking this is, I think this is the power that Palpatine was talking about in Episode 3 when he was talking to Anakin. And he was saying Darth Plagueis had the power to, like, save someone from death. Spoilers, people. Spoilers. Spoilers. So I think that power that Ray was using was the power Palpatine was was talking about in episode three because spoilers, Ray is Palpatine's granddaughter. So don't get me wrong, like I understand her ability to learn that technique, but that's the thing. She didn't learn it, she didn't train for it. Right? She could just do it. And it's not even a implied or alluded to that in between movies she was trained to do so. And if they did allude to that, that wouldn't be good writing. And that would also be another contradiction in, in, uh, in continuity. Because the Jedi do not possess that power. That is a Sith power. That, you know, healing sounds nice and like, you know, light magic, but it's a Sith power as opposed to a Jedi one. So Leia did not teach her that. You know? <laughs> Dude, I said, I warned spoilers, man. I, I totally warned you so many times. Today. He's like, come on, my guy. Come on. I, I, I said we're in the spoilers section like 20 minutes ago. So yeah, so she's just healing people and ha she has this power she didn't have to train for. No one even told her about. She could just kind of do it. 
Uh, that scene where she's like, you know, pulling the ship down because she thinks Chewbacca's on this carrier because he's been captured. She accidentally force lightnings the ship. It's like, I can excuse that a little bit because she did that on accident. And she's like the granddaughter of Palpatine. So the whole prodigy thing going on. But it's like still, I'm pretty sure force lightning is something you, you still have to be trained for to, to do it to that degree where you can just explode a fucking ship. You know what I mean? But yeah, actually, so so let's actually talk about let's actually talk about Ray being a Palpatine. I like that. I actually like that. Um, that is one story element in this trilogy. I think was really cool and I really enjoyed. That is to see. So you, so you guys know how like the Last Jedi apologists they always um say the Last Jedi was so great because it was so um subversive. Oh, it did so much, you didn't expect. Who cares how stupid it was? You didn't expect it, right? Like, no, like, subversion isn't automatically good. It has to be good, sensible, logical subversion, right? That's how That's how you do subversion. You know what I mean? Like, despite the fact that Paul Team being back is really dumb and it makes no sense and it trivializes the original trilogy in the first place, yada, yada, that is how you do a smart subversion. Because this whole time, everyone always thought that Rey was of noble lineage, right? Um, surely she was related to a good guy. You know, maybe she was a Kenobi or a, a Skywalker somehow or something, right? No, turns out she was the granddaughter of the whole mastermind b behind all these movies. So I did think that was cool. I do like what they did with her lineage. I'm so glad J.J. decided to retcon what... What fucking Ryan tried to do in eight, just say, oh, they're nobody. And see, this is supposed to be a story element that just shows that you don't have to be a special someone to be someone. You could just be someone. Like, fuck, that's, that was boring. That was such a boring conclusion. I'm so glad JJ looked at that and was like, nah, fam, this is what we're doing. I really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> I looked, I allocated, I did, didn't get to read the rest of that. I appreciate the follow, man. Sorry about that. So I did like what they did through lineage. Um, let me think what else. Y'all let me know what I haven't brought up or what I haven't mentioned yet. I mean, why why, why wouldn't Palpatine have had sex, right? He is the Senate. I mean, you know, like, if you have all the power in the Emperor, in, in, in the Empire, you don't think you're going to fuck a couple of women? Like, <laughs> if you got all the power in the galaxies, like, you know, what? Well, why not? You know, why not? But no, that probably that probably happened like before, um, before he actually like revealed himself to be a Sith Lord and all that. I imagine because there's no way in his wrinkly ass form it, someone let him hit. Like there's there's just no way. Like like could you imagine, like <laughs> that wrinkly gray dude on top of you? Like oh, ah yes, ah <laughs> that feels so good. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited power! Ah! <laughs> Let me not talk about that. No one wants to think about that shit. Um. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> nah, Ray's not gonna be turned to the next Darth. There's, there's just no way that would happen. That wouldn't make any sense. Um. I didn't think. I me I remember hearing them say that they're going to do another trilogy after this but if i remember correctly that got canceled they don't plan on doing another trilogy right one second let me uh hold up no stay Oh, by the way, guys, I'm um, sorry. I have, to, I have to make sure my door is locked. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm not going to be streaming tonight. Like, this is the stream. Like, I'm not going to be playing a, a game tonight and all that. Because I'm going to have, like, company over and stuff. But, um... Well, where was I at? Yeah, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of other, like, nuances um, in the movie that I either liked or disliked. Um... I don't like, like, so, I, I still retain that I think the movie did the characters justice and treated them with respect. It cheated Chewbacca with respect, Leia with respect, Lando with respect. 
and whatnot. But with that being said, <laughs> yeah, we, we were talking about cis sex, yeah. Um, one thing I didn't like about Rhea is how she just kind of oofs like Luke did. Like, I I don't understand why she died. I don't I don't understand why she died. Um, Luke dying was really dumb, but at least it had an explanation. It was just an incredibly stupid expo- explanation, but um, apparently to do a, proje- a projection of that of that caliber, and then uh, across that type of distance takes a lot out of a user. So he just oofs and dies. Right. All Leia did was speak like. Two words to Kylo. She didn't force project or anything like that. She just called to him through the force, which is a very regular and common force ability that's always been exhibited in the movies. But for some reason, that makes her die in the same way that Luke did. You know, despite how stupid it is that Luke even died from that, it's like, that that's still more logical than, than, than Leia, right? Because, like, Luke projected, you know, I guess you could say, uh, I guess we keep making Skype comparisons here, but he projected audio and video. Leia just did audio, but she oofed. You know, like, I don't, I don't understand why simply speaking to Kylo made her die. I'm, I, I would like to think Maybe Leia allowed herself to die. Like, she let herself go on purpose. Because she felt like her dying and, you know, Han already being dead was the only way to turn Kylo. Like, that's what I would like to think. But that's just headcanon, right? That's not something that's actually explained in the movie, directly stated. If he says it after the fact, sure, I guess I'll accept it, but... Considering that it's unclear, I'm definitely going to be docking off a little small number of points for just the way Leia just kind of dies for no reason. Like, she is the force. <laughs> to the Mary Poppins. Um, I have my notes here because I did like write a couple things in my notepad. I had the navigation signal. Oh, yeah. Uh, another thing I did like about the movie was um, so the rebels find out that Palpatine's alive and he has this the biggest fleet of all time on this planet. He's been hiding hiding out on and stuff and so they go there to try to destroy the fleet before they take off from the planet because if that fleet leaves then that that's pretty much it at that point they're not gonna be able to stop them because they're just gonna be spread throughout all the regions of the universe i felt emotions was when Chewie found out leia died and all his friends i feel like they got cheap motion on the previous development no um I, I i disagree um i agree that that moment was great and probably the most emotional moment of that movie and that, and that was the example that I meant of them doing Chewy justice, you know? Um, and it, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. And this just shows how incompetent of a writer Ryan is. At least for Star Wars. He's done good movies. Don't get me wrong. But we saw Chewbacca's reaction to Leia dying. But we didn't see Luke's reaction to finding out that Han died. Like, like, how does that fucking make sense? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you would never think that would happen. You would never think we would miss out on a Luke reaction to a friend dying, but get the Chewbacca reaction to another friend dying. You know what I mean? So, considering the emotions we got from seeing Chewie beaten up by Leia being dead, like, imagine how we would have felt if Ryan included Luke's reac- reaction to Han. You know? Have Luke start tearing up, red eyes, like, you know, no, no, can't be, you know, something right. Like, but, like, no. He's just like, hey, where's Han? Scene skip. Like, Ryan, what are you doing? <laughs> like, that's really fucking important to that character. But anyways, anyways. um, Yeah, so they go to the planet to stop the fleet from taking off. And it's one of those moments where the movie makes this arbitrary rule that the ships or the fleet can't do something just because. It seemed like JJ just needed some way to make them beating this new empire attainable. You know, Ken, thanks for, thanks for the fall. But yeah, I disagree that it was just Chewbacca. Um, 
The C-3PO moment, although <laughs> I skip. <laughs> it's a follow man. The C-3PO moment was emotional. Yes, they kind of gloss over it and make it, it basically irrelevantize that scene. But when it happened, it was a little emotional. I was like, oh, you know, C-3PO, you know, whatever. Um, it was like another that I can't think of right now. Probably between like Ray and Kylo. Yeah, like Ray and Kylo had like you know a, a moment or two, but um. But yeah, so they make up that rule that, oh, the ships can't take off without the navigation beacon, like, guiding their takeoff process. Like, those things wouldn't be localized on these ships. So, the First Order, um, the First Order catches on to the fact that they're trying to destroy the beacon. So, instead, they transfer, I guess you could say, the navigation hub, or the, the, the center navigator to one of the lead ships in the fleet. So they're like, so the rebels find out, and they're like, oh, so we'll, we'll just have to destroy that ship then. And so they destroy that ship, and so now the other ships can't take off, and all the ships across the galaxy that they had already dispersed get disabled and start falling through the sky. Like, they just all just get disabled and just crash and die. <clears throat> now... This movie isn't the first one to have this terrible trope. Like, it's usually okay when it comes to, like, alien invasion movies, take out the mothership type shit. But considering that this has already happened in Star Wars before, and it's already happened in so many other space movies before, you would think that they wouldn't use such a just tired, stupid, silly, like, system. You know what I mean? <laughs> MacGuffin, yeah, like... These are supposed to be the most technologically advanced ships ever seen in the Star Wars universe, right? So, like, previously in Star Wars canon, you needed something the size of a moon to have planet-destroying power. You know, that being the Death Star. These ships apparently have underbelly cannons that are capable of destroying a, a planet in one shot now. Which is kind of bullshit with and of itself. But, sure, let's, let's, let's go ahead with it, right? Palpatine just has insane technology he's been developing on this planet, right? He's cloning. He's basically a dead body being animated by this machine he's hooked up to. Whatever. He's found a way to shrink the power of fucking Death Star into a ship cannon. Sure. Ebony, come here. Let, let's roll with it. But if the ships are this advanced, if he has that level of technology... Why would he make the ship's navigation and flight systems solely dependent on a single fucking source? And why would there be, like, no type of localized system within the ships? Maybe I could run with the other ships being on the planet being reliant on the lead ship getting them out. Because I can't remember exactly what it was called. Maybe you guys can refresh my memory. But to enter the planet that um, that Palm Team was at, it was like a bunch of like stormy like bullshit and stuff, and you couldn't simply straight like light speed to the planet. There was some type of like warp storm dimension type shit you had to get through and nav physically navigate through. No skipping, you had to like manually fly through. So I under I understand it for the ships that I guess were there on the planet. Sure, maybe they needed a lead ship or some type of lead navigation to just you know, kind of input the autopilot to follow that path, I guess. But, like I said, there were already ships deployed across the galaxy. And once they destroyed that lead ship on the planet, the other ships that were already at other planets and stuff were also disabled. Like, okay. Not that that's a, a super important plot point, but eh, whatever. But speaking of that final battle on that planet... Um, it was cool when, like, just all those other people, the reinforcements for the Rebels, um, showed up. I would, I, I would, I'm not saying it was as epic as, like, the in-game moment, you know, where everyone showed up or whatever. But it was something, like, akin to that, where it kind of had this feeling of, like, oh, everyone's here type deal. And, like, oh, the Calvary's arrived, like they're saying. That was really cool. And I'm not, like, a super Star Wars nerd, but I'm, like... I'm, I'm a little bit of, like, I know a little bit about, like, kind of, like, the back lore stuff that's not presented directly in the movies. Like, I know a little bit of it. And it was just cool to see, like, some of the ships I would recognize from, like, the extended universe and, like, some of the games and stuff like that. So, like, that was, that was a really cool shot 
where like the Falcon swoop down and you see like just all these ships behind it behind them and um and like one of the one of the Empire generals was like you know where where do they get all these rebel you know rebel fighters like where where do all where all these people come from and he's like they're not they're not um yo Hampton thanks for the follow man and he was like they're not they're not rebels they're just people like I thought that was a good line like that 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 whole thing because like earlier in the movie uh who was it it was yeah one of Poe's friends that he runs into tells him like oh no you have more help out there that you that you think the Empire has just made it to they they're for, they made it to where uh, they're making you feel like you have no, you have no help, so you don't try to reach out for it, and so you feel helpless or whatever. Right? So uh, that was a good kind of like you know full three sixty degrees where that Empire General was like it's just people, right? And it was kind of like this example of if people just come together, you know they can overcome all odds. So that was like really nice and cool or whatever. Um, <laughs> Did I talk about the teleportation thing? I think I did, but then I got sidetracked. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I was getting to that when I was talking about how Rey uses force power she never trained for. So, I already talked about how she can heal without tra training for it. And apparently, it's also a Sith ability. But towards the end of the movie, in, like, the third act, she also, like, puts her saber behind her back. And then she removes her hand to see that she teleported it to Kylo. Because Kylo, for some reason ran back to like confront Palpatine or whatever without another saber because he chucks his saber when he decides to like become a good guy which I understand but it's kind of dumb because like now you don't have a weapon so then he just tenacity shows up told me to tell you this the... bitch tell Shokyo that I'm not in stream because I haven't seen rise of Guys, Skywalker yet please. but that I hope he gets to get but some pussy the in the near hurricane. future because he's my nigga Thank you, Hurricane, for the 100. Tenacity, you're not here, but thank you, sir, for your message. That is very endearing. <laughs> Anyways, don't interrupt me. I, um, I appreciate that, kid. Happy holidays to you, man. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so like she teleports the saber to Kylo to help him uh, fend off the Knights of Ren. Um, and I just, I just. Like it was another moment where like 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 it's a it's a cool ability, but again it's just like the light speed kamikaze thing from episode eight that General Haldo did, where it's like it's cool, but now you fucked up, you know what I mean? It's cool, but now you fucked up the continuity. But with that particular scene, it was worse because it's like not only does that reinforce that the Jedi could have done a lot of things that they haven't done before, but also. Ray didn't train to use that ability. She's never trained for it. She doesn't know how to fucking do it. She just needs to do it. And because of the need, she ends up being able to do it. And that's just really fucking annoying. I was fine with Snoke being just a clone. Um, I think that's one of the good... And I, I, know, for, I know that wasn't planned by Ryan or whatever. I know it wasn't. Um, I think that was another good retcon. By JJ, I think JJ salvaged that situation well, because he still he played off of what Ryan did, but he rejected it at the same time, which was incredibly smart. And what I mean by that was, in Episode Eight, Snoke is just kind of treated like a nobody, when clearly he was supposed to be a somebody. So JJ looking at it is like, hmm, okay, how how can I fix this problem? Okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll make it to where Snoke is a nobody, but I'll explain why he was a nobody, right? So, Snoke just being a clone, I thought that made perfect sense. Stop, Teddy, stop. Not right now. Stop. I thought, I thought it made perfect sense because that... It, it, it makes the way he was just dispatched in episode 8 less of offensive. You know what I mean? Because we were, like, really mad and rubbed the wrong way that they would just kill such an important, who we thought was like the overarching villain of the whole entire uh, trilogy, we, we were kind of rubbed the wrong way that they would just off him so easily and abruptly like that. The second movie before the, you know, the climax of the trilogy. But by making him a, a clone, right, it, it, ma it makes it okay. It makes it more okay. Because the whole point was that he was a puppet to begin with. He was just a, he was just a, 
Come here, Teddy. He was just a tool literally created by Palpatine in the first place. You see what I mean? So it makes the way he was dispatched and just irrelevanized and eight more appropriate and acceptable. So I'm okay with him being a clone. Stay in here. The, the, Teddy. Stay. I don't trust him running the house or running around the house like that because whenever he's, he's house trained, but only in his main place of abode, like, sometimes he likes to tinkle, like, on certain corners and shit and furniture. So I don't let, I don't like him running around the house. But anyways, um, yeah, so what are my thoughts on the trilogy as a whole, um, can I name one WWE wrestler? Uh, yeah, it's kind of off topic, but like, uh, I don't know, Big Show, what the fuck? Anyways, <laughs> I don't think this movie's like, I don't think the movie made the trilogy good, but like I said earlier, I think it saved it from being a complete and total disaster. I think the only unwatchable movie is The Last Jedi. Last Jedi aside, no, I will always use Irrelevantized. <laughs> Um, I thought The Force Awakens was a solid watch. And I think, given the cars that J.J. was dealt with, I think J.J. did a good job with Rise of Skywalker. I won't say he did the absolute best he could have, because like I said, I, st I still pointed out and covered a lot of continuity errors and, and things like that, things he could have avoided and whatnot. Um... But still, just given the train wreck that was The Last Jedi, that was that that was a pretty good recovery, I would say. That's that's probably as good as we could have gotten for the most part. You know what I mean? So <laughs> maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way. Maybe I shouldn't think about come here, Teddy. Maybe I shouldn't think about it within the context of episode eight, but it's just really hard for me to remove the context of episode eight when I'm thinking about my overall thoughts on this movie and how it was structured. You know what I mean? But um yeah, yeah, after this movie, after actually coming out of Rise of Skywalker, generally liking it, is this like an actual cartoon? Like an actual thing from like, I don't know, that's like a fan thing. I thought so. Um, I thought the movie was going to be awful. I came out actually liking it. And it, it made me salty because I was like, damn, okay, so if the follow-up to episode 8 could be a movie that I liked... How good could this trilogy have been if Ryan never got involved and J.J. just directed all three movies? You know what I mean? Like, it really made me salty that they fumbled with episode eight. Because if they didn't fumble with episode eight, this could have been a great trilogy. Of course, it wouldn't have touched the original or whatever, but it could have been, it could have been genuinely great. But I would say overall... This new trilogy is, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I can understand if you say it's not okay because the damage it does, the continuity, absolutely. And I agree with you there, but I'm just talking about as far as like pieces of, of, of cinema. You know what I mean? As far as just, like, the individual quality of the movies, simply as movies, I, I, I think it's okay. Ryan's not doing a trilogy. That got canceled. Rate the trilogy 0 out of 10? Okay, so... So you guys know my scale. My scale is like, if I give a movie 5 out of 10, it's pretty like, it's like, it's, it's, it's watchable. Like, you can at least watch it and get through it. It's like my 5 out of 10. So if I were to rate the whole trilogy, I'd give it like a, a 6, 6.5. So, 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 so somewhere, somewhere around that ballpark, I give it like a six. I give it like a six. Like it's, it's, it's better than watchable. 
You know what I mean? It has some generally good moments. It has some... I, at least, I think Kylo's a good character. I think Poe was a good character. Um, you know, I think uh, Finn was good for 7 and 9. Horrible in 8, you know. It has... It's, it looks beautiful. It has a... Oh, great score. This movie had an amazing score, by the way. I love the score um, of Rise of Skywalker. But the trilogy had a good score just overall. You know? It it was I don't, I don't think the trilogy was bad, um, and if they didn't drop the ball with fucking episode eight, I think this trilogy could have easily been an eight, maybe even higher. Who knows? But it's it's really the Last Jedi that really drops and just tanks the overall average for this trilogy. Um, I felt like the Force Awakens was like a seven or like a seven point five. Um, yeah, I, I gave that like a, a seven. I thought this movie on its own was also kind of in that that same ballpark. I thought seven was kind. Of, I mean, episode nine was like a seven as well, seven point five. Uh, despite the damage that all the movies do to the continuity, but you know whatever. Um, that's just kind of like a. That's just something that's just been established in this trilogy, right? And so you can't. It's not really like. Um, it's like I was saying earlier. I can't fault nine. For having these continuity errors because 8 was really the one that, that started that shit to begin with. And a lot of things JJ just simply couldn't escape. You know what I mean? So, yeah. We should still kick out Kathleen, yeah. We, sh we still should. Because it still wasn't great, at least not in my opinion. It still wasn't great. Like, I should never be watching a Star Wars movie. And just be like, it was, it was good. I actually liked it, right? Like, like well, I'm talking about Star Wars here. You know what I mean? Like, you should never feel that way about a Star Wars movie. You know? Like, that's not good enough. It's, it's, the, it's the same way for, like, um, like, Justice League. I thought Justice League was, like, watchable. But it was kind of like the definition and epitome of, like, mediocre. But I should never be saying... The first Justice League movie we ever got is okay. It's not okay that the Justice League movie is okay. Right? Because it's the fucking Justice League movie. So that's kind of how I feel about the Star Wars trilogy. Despite the fact that I thought Episode 7 was solid and I thought Rise of Skywalker was okay. And I generally liked it. It's not okay that it's okay. You know what I mean? The, the, to, to me, the only episode in this new trilogy... Where it's like, it's okay that it was just solid was episode 7. Because it was like an introduction, right? It was establishing its, its basis. It was introducing all these characters, their motivations, a little bit of their backstory. Setting up all these plot points to be explored and branched down to in the follow-up movies, right? So, I think episode 7 just kind of being a rehash of 4. Kind of going through the motions again and reintroducing us to the, to the universe of Star Wars. I thought that was fine. Other two movies were not fine. Well, Last Jedi wasn't fine on its, on its own merit, on its own accord. Like, continuity aside and being part of a trilogy, it was not fine. Um, I think Rise of Skywalker was definitely more fine on its own. But like I said, it's, it's not fine that it was just fine. You know what I mean? So that's kind of like my take on the movies individually. And my take on the trilogy as a whole. Dude, don't remind me of the fucking porgs, dude. <laughs> green robot. You mean that green guy who was working on C-3PO? Star Wars very live action or animated? It was live action, but uh, definitely animated, apparently. Because people love the fuck out of Clone Wars. I haven't watched Clone Wars myself. Like, I've seen a couple episodes. But maybe I should get around to that. I should probably get around to that, but... uh, Yeah. So, I think, what's up, Nappy? I think I got everything out. I'm curious as to what you guys think. What? How did you guys feel about the movie? What? What is your guys' take? Who loved it? Who, who thought it was crap? You thought it was hot shit? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I don't, I don't agree with that. But that's, that's your take. I don't, I don't think it was hot. I don't think it was hot shit. I think it was actually very 
very okay. I thought it was very decent for what it was recovering from. A fanfic the entire way through? That's weird that you would say that because I felt that way about 8. I didn't feel that way about 9. 8 was the fanfic. 9 to me kind of felt like an apology for the fanfic. That, 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 like, that's how I view 9. I view 9 as like a lot of the things that JJ was doing was like it, like he was clearly trying to make up for that shit. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> I thought episode seven was shit. Really? Okay. I mean, that's not that's not the first time I've heard that, but I thought seven. I thought seven was fine. What's up, answers? How you doing? Three out of ten movie all, overall. Nine out of ten visually. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, that that movie was fucking beautiful. That movie was gorgeous. Did 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 no one in here like the movie? Did, did nobody in here like episode 9? Like, really? For glory, don't get banned. <laughs> Nothing said meh. I think those... I think the more recent Star Trek movies are better than uh, this new Star Wars trilogy. Wow, there's not a single person in here who actually liked it. I'm shocked. Okay, Carbon said solid. Very underwhelming, mediocre. Okay, what well, say? I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not shocked because I thought the movie was just great. Because you guys heard what I said, I, I listed tons of problems and flaws. But I'm just saying, as far as like the quantity of people are in here, you know, just based off of like you know probability, I, I would think that there'd be more people saying they enjoyed it. You had no feelings coming off the movie? You're d yeah. Yeah, no, I saw you say that earlier, Scribs, and I think that's kind of accurate. Like, this movie felt like Suicide Squad to me. Well, I'm kind of scared to say that because I know a lot of people think Suicide Squad was trash, but, like, I, it's like, I like Suicide, like, I acknowledge all the problems with Suicide Squad, and it was nothing amazing. And it was stupid, but it was like, it was like, it was, it was still okay in its stupidity type deal. You know what I mean? Like, like it was, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, if you just take it for what it is, you can actually enjoy the movie. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what I did with nine. Cause, and, and, and like I said, I, I, I kind of, when I first started the stream, I was like, Maybe it's just because I was going in with the worst expectations of all time. You know, may, maybe that's why I'm, I'm a bit more positive towards the movie than you guys are. But, you know, it is what it is. I, I was constantly thinking about it within the context of the entire trilogy, within the context of the movie it was following up. Considering what it was following up, considering that episode 8, like, killed and ruined so many plot points set up in 7 and all this stuff. I think nine did like, you know, like it did the best job it could have following up that piece of shit. That was the last Jedi. You know what I mean? Suicide Squad is like a good, a good, enjoy, perfectly fine, enjoyable movie. If you just go in, just expecting a bunch of silly DC villains doing some fuck shit, you know, just, you know, like not expecting super serious and meaningful in depth, you know, narrative bullshit and all that like <clears throat> angry joe thought it was good really huh why bother to fix his helmet what do you mean Okay, so Carbon, you did enjoy it. Okay. So it seems like me and Carbon are the only people in here who actually enjoyed episode 9. Huh. Wow. 
lightsaber bars on his new album. <laughs> now, despite the fact that I was going in thinking this movie's going to be absolute shit, I did also think there was a sliver of hope that it would be a little bit better than I thought it'd be, um, solely based off of the critics' reviews. Because, yo, what's up, Shao? You enjoyed it too? Alright, so that's three of us. Um, but yeah, so, Rise of Skywalker has lower reviews than The Last Jedi. So that made me think, maybe there is a chance this movie's a little bit better than I think it will be. You know what I mean? Because usually if something is like super high rated like that, when it's in like, um, I guess you say like, like uh, it's like a, how can I word it? Like, a nerdy movie, right? It's a movie within the realm of like nerds and geeks or whatever. If it's highly rated, that's a problem. You know, when it's like super highly rated, when it's getting like an 80 or 90 average, like that's the fucking problem, right? Because typically speaking, these critics are, they're not, they're not like us, right? They're not the nerds. They're not the geeks that are into these things. So a lot of them think it's like lame and whack or, or whatever, right? That's why we don't have any MCU movies that have like an 80 or 90 like that. You know what I mean? Because it was like, oh, superheroes, you know, like, like that's silly goof, goof shit. You know what I mean? So the fact that it was lower rated, I, I didn't believe it, but it, it put the thought in my head, maybe it could be a little bit better because I'm seeing critics not liking this as much as The Last Jedi. Because The Last Jedi was less about being a Star Wars movie and more about being its own thing, which is good for non-fans, but bad for fans, right? And then I also try to do so many, like, real-world uh, narratives and tie-ins and, you know, some political stuff. So that's why the critics enjoyed Episode 8 so much. So when I saw the drop in the score with Episode 9, I was like, Episode 9 probably dropped a lot of that shit. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah, a lot do, but, like, just saying the word a lot, like, that's kind of arbitrary. Like, a lot could still be a minority of people. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> But overall, the episode 9 has lower, lower views than episode 8. And now that makes sense. Because you guys remember the live stream? When I was streaming last night, I was saying that I saw people who loved The Last Jedi who hated Rise of Skywalker. I misinterpreted that. I thought people who liked The Last Jedi hating Rise of Skywalker, I thought that was a sign that Rise of Skywalker was going to be incredibly dumb. But now that I'm thinking about it, People who love The Last Jedi, like in Rise of Skywalker, should have been a clear sign that Rise of Skywalker was a better movie. Because you gotta have shit taste to like The Last Jedi. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, like these are people with shit taste and they lack a critical eye. So the fact that they hated Rise of Skywalker should have told me that it was definitely going to be better than The Last Jedi. I completely misread that. Thoughts on the kiss? Uh, I mean, it was it was okay. It's not like it's not like the Ray, not the excuse, not the Ray. It's not like the fucking Finn Rose, you know, situation, nothing like that. We kind of got the gist from the get go. Let's be honest, that there would probably be something developing between you know Ray and Kylo. That kind of went without saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, Jay, you fucking weeb. <laughs> Don't call games art. That's dumb. What games are absolutely art? General Hux wasted. I mean, was he ever really that important, though? You know what I mean? And what else could they have done with him that would have been satisfying or even meaningful? I'm, I'm fine with what they did with Hux. I mean, he never mattered anyways. You know what I mean? Oh, th thank you. Yeah, Dorino. That's a that's another thing I forgot. There's something I forgot to write down in my notes, and that's what it was. Um. So of course, you know, we, I mean, we're doing spoilers this whole time. But just in case anyone's coming in, we are speaking spoilers. Um. So there's this whole thing where they're like falling in that like quicksand type black stuff, and Finn is like, "Ray, I never told you." And then he goes like under the quicksand, and Ray and they they end up surviving, and Ray's like, "So what were you gonna tell me? You, you're about to say something." 
And he was like, uh, I'll tell I'll tell you, you know, privately or in a private or some shit like that. Um, and they they repeat that again later in the movie. And the whole time, Poe's kind of, like, giving Finn an attitude for, like, holding secrets and shit. And he's trying to, like, get in on it and stuff. But they never address it. It's like J.J. straight up forgot that he wrote that. So we never actually know what Finn wanted to say to Ray. The movie ends without Finn ever saying anything to Ray about that I never told you statement. <laughs> it's not like a big deal pivotal to the plot or anything, but it's weird that it's something that gets brought up three times throughout the movie and never actually gets resolved or addressed. You know what I mean? Finn had her needs. But I'm just going to assume Finn loves her. You know, I, I think that's like pretty like clear and abundant, but it's like, let, let him say it. You know, like make that happen. Let us see him say that. It couldn't be him being force sensitive. That's not a... That wouldn't be a secret like that. There would be no reason to hide that information. Why? Why would that be a? Oh, I'm about to die. So let me let me say this thing finally reveal. Ray, I'm force sensitive. Like, I'm like no, that couldn't have been it. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's just one of those really. Oh, oh, that's cool type things. That's not a grand reveal, and we kind of assumed that they would do that with Finn in the first place. Like, you know, before Episode 7 came out, we thought Finn was going to be the one that was going to become a Jedi. Remember? Because all the promotional uh, trailers and the art, you know, they had Finn holding the saber. And they always had Rey just holding her staff. This, you know, and before Episode 7 came out, we, o we always thought that Finn was going to become Force-sensitive in the first place. <laughs> Don't want to see Star Wars and Kingdom Hearts? No, I don't want to see Kingdom Hearts, period, anymore, honestly. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm burnt out on Kingdom Hearts. I'm so burnt out, and I'm good. Okay, but okay guys, are, are they doing another saga? Is that confirmed? Like, I heard about them doing the trilogy, but I can't remember if the trilogy was canceled or Ryan doing the trilogy was canceled. Like, he was canceled from doing the trilogy. I, I, I can't remember the news. But one thing I remember that for sure there was a point in time where a trilogy was confirmed. But either Ryan got canceled from the trilogy or the trilogy itself got canceled. And I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> they couldn't let the black guy be a Jedi. <laughs> Good, they should have got fired because Game of Thrones season 8 was Star Wars episode 8. There's something up with, there's something up with the number 8. Real talk Shokyo. This movie was definitely better than Last Jedi but Rise of Skywalker. As much as it was fun to watch, had so many plot holes yeah. to the point to the point of just pretending like the sequel trilogy never happened. Yeah. Um to fully enjoy this movie from a story style, I agree with that. I think so 200 bits by the way. Um to fully enjoy the story, you you ba it's one of those things where like the suspension a belief that you're required to have is just kind of it's a level that's just way too fucking high kind of like with uh spider-man far from home like that movie really insults the audiences the viewers intelligence you know it, it just really does um <laughs> but the reason why i am i'm not giving it as much crap for the plot holes it has is is again because of the cards that episode nine was dealt you know what i mean like so that's why I can't, I'm, I'm, st I'm still giving it crap for it, just not as much as I would. I'm not making it as such severe uh, negatives as it could be. You know what I mean? <clears throat> no, it didn't. You're saying it didn't have many plot holes? No, for Skywalker definitely had plot holes. The whole trilogy is just plot holes. And, and just in case anyone's like, well, in the original trilogy, there's this play. Every movie is going to have some plot holes. But there is, like, I guess you could say there is a a buffer, right? 
to where there, there's there's just like a buffer amount of plot holes and issues a movie can have before it actually starts becoming a serious negative. You know what I mean? Because they're movies. No mov- movie is always going to be perfectly written like that. Movies, especially ones set in these sci-fi and fantasy universes, they always have plot holes and stuff like that. The problem with this trilogy is that there's so many to where it's like, okay, they can't be ignored or forgiven at that point, right? Because they're just overflowing. Or you're talking about Spider-Man. Twenty? Are you kidding me, my guy? Are 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 you are you kidding me, my guy? Okay, so <laughs> this is kind of getting off the topic, but like I said. It's these fantasy superhero sci-fi movies and stuff. So, of course, there's going to be silly, ridiculous things. Oh, why don't they just do this? How did nobody see that? Yada, yada. Far From Home just takes that shit to a whole nother level, man. Peter does all this shit just in, like, pure, plain, public view where anyone could fucking see him and nobody fucking sees him. No, the fucking bus scene? Come on, man. The fucking bus scene. Yeah, I'm going to go see Black Widow. Come on. That bus scene was one of the most ridiculous things I've seen, even for superhero movie standards. That scene was fucking ridiculous. And I really felt like whoever the fuck directed that movie was trying to tell me I grew up wearing a helmet. Come on, it was way more than Peter just giving him the fucking glasses. It was way more than that. Should have had a bigger role? Nah. The, the, the The less amount of force ghosts in these movies, the better. Because clearly they didn't know what the fuck to do with these force ghosts. They don't have any established rules with these force ghosts. So like just anything kind of goes. And I would say that's the biggest problem with episode 8 and 9 is that um, they just don't seem to care about establishing any type of rules or limitations. Or if you're going to go ahead and convey that there's no limits to the power of the Force, at least make it a rule that people have to work towards unlocking these these limits, you know? Like, 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 like... It's kind of weird to make this comparison because I'm going from Star Wars to fucking anime. But, like, for for Saiyans, right? Like, Goku. Saiyans are limitless. There are no rules that really prevent them from doing shit. But they at least have to train and get their asses being worked towards it. You know what I mean? With episodes 8, well, not even episode 8 and 9 because, I mean, Rey starts doing shit from the jump in episode 7. So, like, in this whole trilogy, um, the Force has no limits. You can do whatever you want with the Force. And you don't have to train to do these things. If you can think about it, you can do it. It's like, it's like, like probably the main offender in this trilogy is that the Force is literally just magic at this point. Like, it is just literal, literal Houdini, Alakazam, just, you know, magic. As to before... The force was, it's like, yeah, it was always kind of like a whole, kind of a spiritual thing, but it was also like scientific a little bit at the same time, you know? Like, there was a scientific explanation for the force. It's a, how did Obi-Wan explain it? He said it was like a, a living force field that surrounds and also penetrates all living things, you know what I mean? Like, it was like a, a literal physical force. In this movie, not in this movie, in this trilogy, it no longer simply feels like a physical force. It just feels like it's just a source of magic. It's like chakra or chi or nin, you know, (laughs) something like that. But yeah, but yeah, like, like speaking of chakra nin and all that stuff, like, you know, in all these anime universes and stuff, like, even as ridiculous as anime is, it's crazy to me how these animes have more rules and more um, respect to their power creep than uh, this trilogy has had with, you know, with, 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 the, with, with Rey. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Like, 
I mean, we're talking about these ridiculous animes where characters are like universe level threats and they're flying out of space and teleporting and all this shit. And they're adhering to more rules than Star Wars. <laughs> Why does Dragon Ball Z adhere to more established rules than Star Wars? Like, if you think about that, that's kind of crazy. I started watching episode one of Witcher, actually, Melodic, um, last night. But I had to, like, stop it, like, a third in because I was, like, tired and going to sleep. So I'm going to have to like, kind of rewatch it again. But it seemed really good based on what I've watched so far. It seems really fucking good. <clears throat> yeah, I, I like Nin as well. So Nin is like the most like role based like magic source that I can really think of right now with, within any type of fiction. Yeah, that seems what have happened. What have uh, that seems to have been what happened here. What um, and like I said, like, it wouldn't be so bad to just have just willy-nilly any force power type shit popping up. It wouldn't have been so bad if at least Ray had to work for it. But that's really the main offender is that there's just no work for it. Like, okay, sure, we can teleport things through the force, but at least let her practice it. At least let her be like, oh, wow, that's something we can do. Let me meditate or something. Like, you know, something it's sure it's still be an ass pull that she can obtain that level of power within the same movie but like at, at least she tried you know at least there was something she had to strive for but Ray's just like oh oh that's the thing okay hmm oh shit i'm doing it like you know like like come on man come on come on man <laughs> <clears throat> yeah like i said like the force was always a, a scientific explanation it was never this just it the force was never a magical uh a magical just source of power it was a physical force it was the the force was something just as real as gravity you know what i mean unless you're a flat earther <laughs> but it was just as real as like gravity you know what i mean it was just manipulating a physical, real force that existed in the world. That's what the force was. But being able to teleport things through the force, like, that doesn't make sense. That, that, that doesn't make sense. The force is, like, a field around living things. How does that translate into taking an inanimate object? And sending it somewhere else via UPS Air. Like. What about Force Lightning? Force Lightning is fine because it's basically taking that energy. And the, 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 the Force is, a, is, is an energy. So it's like, yeah, within a sci-fi fantasy world. It, it could make sense that users would be able to find a way to uh, take an energy and convert it into an electrical force. You know? If there's one, if there's one source of... If, if, if something is a an energy, it makes sense that you'd be able to convert that energy into other form factors. You know what I mean? Lightning is, is, is fine. Teleportation is not, because lightning is still physical. Right? They're taking a physical force and all they're doing is translating it into or yeah, like translating it into a different form factor that is also still physical. It's like, yeah, that makes that makes sense, but just teleportation? Like, you know? I don't I don't I don't I don't quite get that. I don't I don't I don't get that. Ray was just poorly written, but now they're using her unga bunga as the point of her character. Like, she's just the force to be reckoned with, like Superman. Nah, I don't think that's what they're going for. I just think they just forgot to write a good character. But like I said, the force... Uh, not the force wake, excuse me. Um, Rise of Skywalker... Rise of Skywalker Ray is the best Ray. It's the best Ray has been. 
She was way more topple in this movie than the other ones. Even the Jedi mind trick makes more sense than teleportation. Because remember, the Force is also inside living things as well. So you can just chop that up to a manipulation of the Force within someone. And so you're able to have influences on their brain because of that. There you go. <laughs> Y'all can't compare that type of shit to teleportation. You got to remember, someone's mind is linked to a physical object being the brain, right? Like your mind is linked to your brain. Your brain is linked to your body. If you have these midichlorians and, you know, the forces around and inside every living being, then, yeah, it would make sense that you'd be able to manipulate the force to manipulate the brain to, in effect, manipulate someone's mind. There you go. Teleportation doesn't make sense. <laughs> I mean it'll be fine if they got free reign if they just like cared more about just the continuity but like you the, you you can trust some people with that but apparently just not them like I don't know <clears throat> Yeah, I like I know, I know what teleportation is, but the force doesn't manipulate those things. Is 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 the thing like the force manipulates like you know living beings, physical objects. Um, I can't think of a time or way where the force has bent space or altered time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, time isn't physical, therefore, may maybe there's some comic or something, the ex extended universe. As far as I know, there's been no instance of the Force ever manipulating something non-physical like that. You know what I mean? Never happened? Okay, I, yeah, I, I, I thought so. The wheels? Where are the wheels? What is the wheel? Uh, Oath Keeper, um, the movie, the movie's really flawed, but I did enjoy it overall, is my general take. Um, and I'm not so harsh on its flaws, because I, I think it was, it was pretty solid, given the, the hand it was dealt. That's my general take of episode 9. Oh, uh, okay. I'm going to have to look into that. See, now, now that this trilogy is over, um, I actually started watching some like YouTube Star Wars videos and stuff. I'm actually going to like get into reading the comics and, and things like that. Like, I actually want to get into Star Wars. Like, really, really. I've always liked Star Wars, but it was mostly just kind of like, um, I'm, I'm, I was a fan of the movies. Now I'm, I'm going to actually like watch the comics and watch the comics, read the comics and, and shit like that. But yeah. Yeah, a, 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 exactly. Well, like, yeah, it's like, I, I, I can see why people would say it was just a mediocre movie. But like you, I'm also coming from the perspective of like, look at what it was following up. You know what I mean? For what it was dealt, I thought it did a good job. It could have been way fucking worse. I, w I went to go see it with a friend of mine. And afterwards, I was like, that movie had every reason in the world to just be a colossal and utter mess. It was still a little of a mess, but it wasn't an utter and colossal mess, right? So, like, that's a victory in my eyes. You know what I mean? Because they had every reason and every excuse to fail and just be a total heaping, steaming pile of shit. And it somehow wasn't. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll give him a, I'll give JJ a W for that movie, man. I feel, I feel like very few directors 
could have followed up on what Ryan did and still made an okay movie, right? Like, made an okay follow-up. You know what I mean? That's my take. That's my take. I know the majority of y'all disagree with that. I saw a lot of you guys giving it like a 3 and 4 out of 10. That's the scores I would get for The Last Jedi. I thought this movie was like 6.57. I'd give it a 7. This movie was like a 7 for me. <clears throat> Good bad pre Larson. <laughs> yeah, because I heard like flying around. Which would have sold the whole fleet. But yeah, guys, I think that um that just about wraps everything up. <laughs> Agree, melodic, yeah. Yes, and, and, and that and that's that's another example of what I was saying, how like I feel like they did the characters justice in this movie. They did every character really well. They did Han justice, Leia justice, Kylo. Um, you know, the the relationship and dynamic between uh Ray, Finn, and Poe, like characters were well done in this movie. Very well done. And you know, like the love they had for each other and the camaraderie and all that, it was very tangible. For me anyways. It was very tangible. It was convincing. The actors did a good job. The script was way better when it comes to the direct dialogue between characters. Really good. That's why the best thing about this movie was the intimate um, relationships and interactions between the characters. Was the best thing about this movie. Like I said, it but compared to The Last Jedi, it doesn't have as good spectacle and boom, ooh, wow, whoa, you know, popcorn flick shit. It sacrifices that. For more tactful writing. But it's a better movie for that. You know what I mean? It's it, it, it's better in doing that. So I'm not saying that as like a, a downside or, you know, anything like that. It's it's better for that sacrifice, for that trade-off. You know what I mean? But yeah, guys, that's um basically it. If you guys missed a lot of this, I will be uploading it to my YouTube channel. So you guys can catch the beginning um, and all that good stuff. And I talked a lot about...